Road here. We'll do a video for you. Um, today is January 19th, 2020. And uh, yeah, before we get into some of the other data, like the Schumann and the, the magnetopause and stuff, um, we're going to look at this real quick. Um, we've had a filament releasing off of the sun. It started on the 18th. Um, actually, there was a couple different filaments that got released off. And this second one was fairly large. Now, you know, it's not a solar flare, it's not a CME, but it is material that's leaving the sun, so it, it, it would be solar activity. And we're going to, technically it's not a CME, but it looks very similar to one, <laughs> um, but it's not. So, what we're looking at is over here, okay, actually, if I, if I, uh, if I was looking at this right, it's actually two different ones, but we'll go look at the SDO here in a minute. This is SOHO. This is basically sitting in a very similar position as the SDO. It's out in front of the Earth looking at the sun. Okay, and it orbits with the Earth around the sun. So if we're looking at this, that's the point of view. So again, um, I'll zoom in here so you guys can see that a little bit better. Um, this is what caused me to stop and look at it anyway. Um, just seeing this right here because it was a, I was seeing a lot of activity on this side of the sun. And, you know, it's been, been that way for a couple of days now, but this, this time I think the filament actually did leave. So, and we'll go check that out here right now. So, um, just give me a minute. Okay, guys, got your SDO. We're going to look at it in a couple of different angstroms. Um, this is the 171. Um, this one shows the corona of the sun uh, really well. Uh, but what I want you guys to look at, it's over here. And obviously you can see a lot of material leaving the sun. All right. Um, sometimes, a lot of the time, when you see those kinds of things, the sun recaptures it. But when you see a, a fast-moving, big swath of this stuff, it does, a lot of, most of the time it doesn't come back to the sun. So it did release on off. And I'll show it to you in the 304 here in a minute, and it can, it'll confirm what I just said. Um, but as you can see, you know, sometimes we get these filaments dancing around, but then you get that. You know, when it goes real fast, you can tell that that's trying to whip on off. Um, and that is a large one, guys. That's a large filament release. Okay. Um, and, and I'll show you. I, I think there's a smaller filament on the other side of the sun right now. Um, and I'll show you. I'll show you what uh, like a normal size one would be versus what we just seen right there. Um, so we'll go look at the 304 over here real quick also. And, you know, see if I can show you guys the difference. Um, but there you go. There's that. Okay. This is the 304, guys. It's this the red view here. And we'll look up here. This is kind of a smaller one. You see those dancing around right there around the limb? Okay. And sometimes those release off. Okay. And most of the time it's not really that big of a deal. Even if it is earth directed, it's usually not that big of an issue. But when we go down here and look at this one, see that? You see how that sucker just goes right on off and the size, the, the difference in size? Um, so that was, a, that was a decent sized filament that decided to leave. So, um, it didn't look to be like some big, big, massive CME explosion type of filament release, but it, it again, it did release. You see that? And it did take off and start moving pretty quick. And it looks to be like it's heading towards stereo A, which would be, you know, not towards towards us. It would be heading off. Well, if you're looking at the sun, it'd be to your left. Um, but yeah. And, and I'm looking at this, guys, and, you know, this over here is, is very typical. Now, this way, right, right over here, you see this one? I think that's um, around that sunspot that was a, that was a, that was Earth facing a few days back. Um, and again, these are unusual to see. Matter of fact, they're fairly common. Um, we see a lot of these dancing around on the limb of the sun, but when we see them release off, you know, obviously we have to pay attention because that is that's solar weather. Now, if that was coming at us, um, we would definitely get some uh, effects from that. Uh, it, but it doesn't look to be. So I, I want to, you know, kind of stress that. But whenever you see a filament releasing off like that, you know, stop and look at it because it is, number one, it's kind of neat to look at. Number two, it can give us some issues if it's coming at us. So, um, but I wanted to show you guys that first. Okay, guys, got you over here at the Schumann. Um, as you can tell, the activity is continuing. Um, we had, looked like we had a little bit of a lull spot there didn't seem to be too bad earlier uh uh throughout the 18th into the 19th but it looks as though stuff's you know spiking again um yeah there's not a whole lot to say about this but just pay attention to it guys because 
you guys start feeling bad and high blood pressure even guys um ringing in your ears like i've said multiple times is probably one of the main uh side effects from this that we actually can point our finger to fairly certain when we have that ringing in our ears if you go look at this thing and it's ringing off the charts like right here um you could pretty much bet unless you do actually have a medical condition called you know uh tendonitis that's what uh, that would be called if you had ringing in your ears but um but yeah but just to speak on this a little bit more guys um you know it's th this activity here is not slowing down and um mr mbb3 actually did a video on this yesterday too and he, he made a good point because sometimes weather can affect this um it'll affect the way the tools read this signature um because this way that this is done this isn't done by just collecting one data point and plotting it here it, it it collects an average it collects multiple points and puts an average and that's what you see here okay so even weather like lightning okay has if it's around these detectors can't affect what this thing does it would change the frequency okay it would it would it would change the vibration in that area which is why we got to pay attention. That's why they give you an average and not just off of one station. But he, Mr. MBB3 made a great point in the fact that um, he went and checked out the lightning because, you know, he's seen this big spike also. And um, the lightning for that day that was, you know, you can go to the maps and see where it's uh, globally and check out on the lightning data. And it, it was dead. There wasn't hardly any lightning going on. So... You know, you can't really point to that for causing this. But I, you know, like I said, I'm going to show you some magnetopause stuff here in a minute. I think that that is what's actually messing with this some, somewhat, okay? And it would make sense. And that's why we look at all this. Because it does, bottom line, guys, the frequency is changing right there. I mean, it will affect people in a, in a major way sometimes. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um I just wanted to explain how this chart actually works a little bit, you know, because it is an average of multiple uh, data points. It's not just one data point in one location. So, okay, guys, um, this is a, a, a new YouTube channel called Project Disclosure. Scott's starting this up. Um, if you guys would, go over and check this out. You know, go give him a sub, and because this isn't uh, just based around you know planet x stuff okay this is more so around the news and anything that um people basically are afraid to talk about stuff like this a lot of the times you know given given the current climate <laughs> uh even geopolitically and stuff um most people steer away from the you know the chemtrail conversation and all that kind of a thing and um you know he's going to dive into it so I, I would suggest everybody go over and just sub up to this and, and check it out. Um, it's not going to be his typical Planet X stuff. This is something he's branching out and doing on his own. So I, I do think that um, it deserves a look. So if you guys could, man, just, I'll, I'll leave a link. So if you guys would go over and give him a, a sub and um, show some support that way. And, and again, he would probably tell you the same thing I'm getting ready to tell you. If you don't like it, just unsub. I mean, just give it a chance. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, on to the Magnetopause stuff. I'll leave a link to this, guys. Okay, guys. This is uh, the Magnetopause stuff I was going to tell you about. Now, guys, this is stuff, again, that it just shouldn't be happening like this. We're, we are definitely getting hits on our magnetosphere, and we are not catching any kind of high solar wind whatsoever. Okay? And, and again, I showed you guys in my previous video that they aren't even predicting any kind of a, a solar wind stream to be here at Earth until the 20th. Okay? Um, so this is totally odd and for us to be seeing signatures and stuff that's happening here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this through. Okay? Now, first thing you guys can notice, you know, you're getting some pretty good pressure there on the back side and on the front. Okay? And, you know, you can always tell because you get that light blue in the middle. And when it starts filling in almost completely light blue, that means that there's quite a bit of pressure going on there. All right. And then when you start seeing the reds and yellows get inside the satellite line here, that's also, you know, a telltale sign that we're getting some sort of solar activity. 
um, as you can see the dotted line there okay now what I want to say here guys is I'm seeing something here again that we talked about in one of my previous videos not too long ago but if you guys look at that okay and here we go now what now what I want to point out here okay this is what we started off with all right now if you look at the front you see that that's some pretty good pressure out in the front. It's hitting our bow shock, and, it, and, and it's doing its job. It's knocking it away. It's not letting it in. It doesn't look, look like it is. But that's a pretty big hit right there. And look at the blue back there, too. The darker blue, that's low-dense material. All right, so it caught something there, and it's dragging some material with it. Now watch. Watch what this does out in the front. Okay, take the hit right there, and then it, we expand out. But when it comes back, what happens? Okay, you see how it kind of went, the direction of the pressure went up this way. Okay, it's no longer directly on the front. So, you know, again, if this was coming straight from the sun, you know, the sun's material, when it comes at us, it comes at us like buckshot. It spreads out. By the time it gets to us, most of the time, it's pretty evenly distributed as far as when it hits our magnetosphere, okay? So usually we see the signatures that, that whatever's happening up here is also happening down here. So when we don't see that, we automatically have to almost assume that it's directional, right? So as we go through, and then I, then I see this. Again, look at that, okay? So we got, I mean, if anybody looking at that is going to assume that that's a weak spot again. And this is in the same spot that we've seen it the other day. All right, so my question is, what is what's going on here? Because it most definitely looks like that would be an easy path for something to get in. Okay, now we did take a hit right before that. I just showed it to you, and which is probably why that, that happened. Okay, now it doesn't mean that anything's gone. It just means it's, it's easier for particles to get in there. So as we go through this, you can see how it tries to recover itself, all right, and then it did it again. You see that? See how the pressure's changing from the top to the bottom, okay? So it just, in my mind, I don't, it should be symmetrical. We shouldn't be getting that kind of stuff. Now, again, look at that. That's a signature we don't typically see, okay? Let me back that up a little bit. What you're seeing here, look at that, okay? I can't, I bet I've met, I might have seen this happen one or two times before. You see how, um, cause it usually bends around what it did. It actually went back the other direction right there in front of the bow shock. Okay. And again, I've not seen that, but maybe once or twice, usually the bow shock is pushing out, causing that material and stuff to push out, but that is not doing that. that like, it's almost like it left it itself. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but that's definitely what it looks like. Okay, boom, rapid expansion again. And what, watch, you know, the whole thing is moving from top to bottom. It's like rotating. You seeing that? And then look, this is what I'm talking about why I think this is directional. If you look up here at the line that representing our bow shock, watch what it does. And it's not doing it on the bottom. It's not going to do it down here. See how it comes in? Okay, so that's coming in from that direction. All right, and it's getting all contorted. We're doing all this. I mean, just massive compression and, and rapid expansion. And you can see it's tilting a little bit. Our magnetics are tilting a lot, and it's very much, it's, in other words, it's doing a lot of variable movements here very, very quickly. Okay, you can tell by back here because it, it's almost like it's, you know, looking like that, right? Well, the next couple of captures, it's going to look like this, like it's going the other way. Let me show you. See how it's moving around some? See? Okay, it went from that. to that okay and, and and again that's it's moving around there and it's it's doing it out front 
But the main thing, guys, is that, you know, we've seen that little weak spot there again. Okay, and it looks to be directional. So I can't say that this came from the sun because I don't think that it did. Um, I think this is coming from outside sources of somewhere, um, you know. And here's the solar wind, wind graph that's really going to tell the tale. Now, see, look, right away. Okay, I mean, what's inside our bow shock here does not look normal in any way, shape, or form. Okay, that is not what this usually looks like. Anybody that's been watching my channel for a while knows that. Um, and those that are new just know that that is not normal. Um, and actually, I think it gets red here in a second. But we are we do take some hits, but again, it's the, the wind speed's not getting that high. Okay, now look what happens to I mean... It's just, look at the shape this stuff is taking. It's just, it's just so odd. And, man, I just don't know what to say about that. I really don't. Again, there's another, there's another hit, but look at the wind speed. Okay, th this is a great example. Here's the, here's the wind speed. I don't think it gets up over 400, but yet we get a smack right in the face. Well, it got 450. Okay. That's what it, 500. There's a 500. All right. But still, it's not that high, is what I'm trying to say. Usually when we see those big hits like that, we're looking at wind speeds at 700 kilometers per second or above. Okay? Um, so that right there is just telling you that our, our magnetosphere is not as strong as what it was. It is definitely weakened. Okay? Um, but then again, look at this. Okay? So you're seeing the difference in material here as far as the density. It most certainly is not what normal conditions should be okay and again i can't give you any kind of good explanation on why that's happening um all i can do is show you the observation right now and tell you that i don't think it's coming from the sun um i don't know where it's coming from but you know could be coming from our object out there interacting you know that filament release and all that kind of a thing um but guys just pay attention to the schumann um you know, and I'll keep you up to date on this kind of a thing, and then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll touch base with you guys here in the next day or so, and we'll see what's going on, but, um, until then, guys, God bless, Shua saves, and, uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.